Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. So a couple of uh, weeks ago, I noticed that when I was hitting my brakes, I heard a squealing noise. Now guys, this is very common. This is what happens when your front brake pads wear out. They have a little squealer on the end that if you don't crank your music too loud, you should be able to hear it. So guys, this is my car. This is a 2011 Honda Fit. The mileage is uh, 65,000 kilometers. For my American friends, I think that's about 40,000 miles. I think this is pretty typical for a lifespan for brakes. Now, that also depends on your driving style, your driving habits, uh, your commute. There's other things involved. But I can say that these, uh, me doing these brake pads, this will be the first time that it's being done on this car. So, guys, when you have a higher mileage, uh, your rotors, you also need to check the thickness of the rotor with a caliper, which I don't need to do here, but it's something that you have to be aware of because your rotors uh, wear down along with your brake pads. So what we'll do now is material and tools. All right, guys, this is our material list. So we have gloves, brake pads. So guys, these are Raybestos. I suggest getting a reputable ba uh, brand of brake pads. I mean, brake pads are like tires that you want. In my opinion, you want a quality brand. So this is the squealer. We'll look at the ones that are actually on the car, but uh, these are our brake pads. You have uh, a set for each side. You have the clips, we'll see what I need to use. Penetrating oil, grease, and then we have brake cleaner. Guys, this is what I believe I need to do this job. So what we'll do now is the tools list. All right guys, this is our tools list. So standard socket set, I believe just 12 millimeter is what I need for this car. Uh, tire iron, this is the wheel lock nut for this car, it came with the car. Uh, I will have two blocks to put, uh, to put under the car in case the uh, jack falls down because I'm not going to use jack stands. It's just it's extra work that I don't think is nece necessary. And then I have my jack. Guys, this is what I believe I need to do this job. So let's get started. Alright guys, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull off our plastic cover. It just has a ring that snaps into the lip. So guys, these are steel wheels. They have a fashionable cover just to make them look a little bit better. So guys, this is a wheel lock nut and the rest of these are just typical. So I have the wheel lock nut. This is from my set that comes with the car. So guys, when you loosen off your wheel lock nuts, do it in a star pattern. Don't do it in a, a circular direction. All right guys, once all the lug nuts are loose, now we are going to jack up the car. All right guys, so this is our jacking point. As far as I know, every car has a jacking point here, but you see this here? I don't think these indentations here mean anything. But with the, with the jack, make sure that you put it in between so it doesn't slip off the jack. All right guys, and just lift it high enough. This is standard, so the transmission isn't locked. So your, t your wheel needs to be able to f uh, spin freely. If it doesn't, you need to go higher. Instead of using jacks, what I'm gonna do is just put a couple blocks underneath in case it slips. Now the exhaust system is here, so don't go too far. And if it falls for some reason, at least it's going to catch on the blocks. Alright guys, so what we'll do is we'll take off the lug nuts. Alright guys, so this is our caliper. So we have a 12 mil bolt there. We have one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray just a little bit of penetrating oil onto them. Give it 5 or 10 minutes. So guys, these bolts are like most other things. It's uh, righty tighty lefty loosey. All 
All right, guys, and be very mindful. Your flexible brake hose, don't hang your caliper off your flexible brake hose. If you need to, wire it to something to hold it in place. All right, so we'll take our top clip out. All right, guys, so they slide out. So this is our outside. Guys, also take note how you can see the uh, the pattern of dirt, which will also help you remember the way it goes. All right, guys, so there's our other one. You can see the piston, how it is, and this is our squealer. This one isn't touching, so I must be hearing the other side. So we'll take off our clips. So guys, be aware which way the clips go. They're actually the same thing, but this one, the bottom one is upside down from the top one. All right, guys, so we'll take our brake cleaner and then we're just gonna give it a good shot. And guys, I suggest you do this every time because your brakes are gonna get dirty. And make sure you're also using brake cleaner because you want this stuff to evaporate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the new set of brake pads in. Alright guys, and also make sure that you always compare your new and your old. And then you can see the difference in the thickness between the two. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our clips in. I think they only go really one way, so that snaps on. And then you can follow the line of the, uh, the dirt. All right, so our clips are on. All right, so this is our rear pad. It has the, uh, the squealer on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Our grease and just put a little bit on the back now guys be careful you don't want grease on the inside here where your pad is or on your rotor because your brakes work by friction so you don't want to put any type of lubricant but what's once that's in all you do is slide it back into the groove All right, guys, so for the outside, because the uh, the caliper here and here, all you need to do is put a little bit on, on the edges. Sorry, I missed, a, I missed it on the first one. Just put a little bit, a tiny bit of grease on, on the edge. All right, so for this one, these have two clips. So you put your clip there. Like that. And then you put it in the bottom holes as well. All 
All right, guys, so before we can put the caliper back on, what we need to do is depress the piston. So there's our piston right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the old brakes, throw it inside, and then we're gonna take a C-clamp, and then we're gonna push the piston back in. All right guys, so give the rotor a turn to make sure that it turns freely. Other than that, that is all there is to it. What we'll do is we'll put the tire back on and then I'll get started on the other side. All right, so we'll get our tire back on first. All right, so put your lug nuts back on. Your wheel lock nut, it doesn't matter which one you put it on. Oh guys, one other thing. Uh, the, the cone shape, sometimes uh, uh, the cone shape doesn't go so far back, but the cone needs to be on the inside. You can put it on some of them. You can put it on backwards. If the cone is on the outside, then you put it on backwards. And yes, this does matter because you can lose your lug nuts. All right guys, with everything hand tight, what I'll do now is I'll lower the car and then we'll tighten these up. Again, let's go in a star pattern. All right guys, the lug nuts, are supposed to be 80 foot pounds. I mean, just tighten it really well. And then we'll snap on our plastic cover, and that'll be it for this side. All right, now we'll go ahead and do the other side. All right, guys, so I finished the other side. So the next thing we want to do is we need to start the car. All right guys, now you have to pump your brakes until they're stiff. So the piston is uh, nice and tight to the brake pads. So guys, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go take it for a test drive. So on the test drive, what I'm looking for is, do I notice any noise, any vibration? Does anything seem out of the ordinary? And guys, I have had this happen where uh, one of my brake pads started dragging. I felt the vibration and uh, just as I got back to the house my brake pads caught on fire So what I'll do now is take it for a test drive and then we'll come back All right guys, so I took it for a test drive everything seems to be okay. I didn't notice anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything Guys, this is a, it's relatively a simple job to do brake pads the thing is, you need resources to do it. You need equipment. You need a, uh, a jack, sockets. I mean, this isn't, it's not technical. It's just you need, you know, stuff to be able to do this job. Guys, the time on this job, I would say is about 40 minutes aside. So uh, call it an hour and a half. This is a one hour job for any automotive shop. I mean, they have better equipment. Uh, they can lift the whole car up so they can do this a lot faster. The cost of this job, the brake pads were $95. Now the cleaner, the, the penetrating oil, and the grease, I already had all those, but guys, call it, for a Honda Fit, which is an economical car, uh, you can call it about $110. This is relatively easy, it's relatively straightforward. Like I said, you just need resources to do this. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to make you more confident to work on your car when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button. Subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.